so this is the precentral sulcus which will be limiting the precentral gyrus in front of the precentral sulcus you have three uh, gyri that are running like this this is the superior frontal gyrus then you have the middle frontal gyrus and next you have the inferior frontal gyrus so three gyri will be like this superior middle and inferior okay so in the frontal lobe you have a precentral gyrus and superior middle and inferior frontal gyrus as i mentioned this is the primary motor area area number 4 in front of the primary motor area here you have parts area number 6 area number 8 which are pre motor area area number 8 and part of area number 6 contains a frontal eye field and in the inferior frontal gyrus you have more subdivisions if you if you look at the sylvian fissure once more i mentioned that this is called sylvian fissure but actually this is the posterior ramus of the sylvian fissure you have more rami ramus means branch you have more rami that runs into the inferior frontal gyrus that will invade the inferior frontal gyrus one is this ramus that is rising up almost in a vertical position it is ascending up into the inferior frontal gyrus another uh, ramus of the sylvian fissure runs more horizontally anteriorly so this is the anterior horizontal and this is the anterior ascending ramus of the sylvian fissure these two will separate the ifg or the inferior frontal gyrus into a pars orbitalis because this is the orbital surface of the cerebrum then a pars triangularis then a pars opercularis so why this is called operculum operculum the word means lid this almost looks like three lids covering uh, the insula the insula is in the depth and one lid from the frontal lobe one lid from the temp uh, parietal lobe and one lid from the temporal lobe will come and close it so that is why this is called pars opercularis so pars orbitalis pars triangularis and pars opercularis this region is especially important especially this is the left frontal lobe in 95% of people on the left frontal lobe the pars triangularis and the pars opercularis will have the motor speech area or the broca's area okay and this will be seen on the dominant hemisphere in 95% of people the left hemisphere will be dominant uh so the this this is the broca area this region is the broca area this this is the region which programs the speech of a person so this region will program speech and that will make the primary motor cortex of the head uh, the regions of the larynx tongue all to articulate to produce speech so you can think that this area is going to program this region okay similar to that i mentioned there is an area number 6 and area number 8 the area number 6 in front of the uh, primary motor area this region is called the premotor uh, cortex the premotor cortex will program most of the uh, motor programs towards the uh, uh, precentral gyrus so you can think that these regions are sort of programming the uh, precentral gyrus to perform motor activity okay now uh, the frontal eye field is important for gaze horizontal gaze into the opposite side if this frontal eye field gets stimulated the eyes will move to the opposite side so this is the left frontal eye field it gets stimulated the eyes will drift towards the, there will be a saccadic movement of the eye towards the right side now uh, the rest of the region is not less important this is a very important part this is called the prefrontal cortex the prefrontal cortex actually is a seat of intelligence drive judgment uh initiative everything lies in the prefrontal cortex you can see classical cases where prefrontal cortex have been injured in people which has seriously affected the behavior of that persons uh next we'll go to the features that are seen on the on, on the temporal lobe in the temporal lobe uh, you can see if i just separate the sylvian fissure on the superior surface of the temporal lobe you can see gyri that are running from the lateral aspect to the medial aspect you can see how this gyrus is different this gyrus are running from lateral to medial all the other gyrus were either uh, superior to inferior or anterior to posterior but these are running lateral to medial the anterior two gyri that you see here that is called the heschel's gyrus the heschel's gyrus is important because this is the primary auditory area area number 41 all the auditory signals from the medial geniculate nucleus of the thalamus get projected into this through the auditory radiation so this is the place where auditory signals will become processed in the cortex so that is the primary auditory area around the primary auditory area you will have the area number 22 which is auditory association cortices that will be around it 
the most posterior aspect of the superior temporal gyrus over here you will have the Wernicke's area. Wernicke's area is seen on the most posterior aspect of the superior temporal gyrus. That region uh, is the sensory speech area. Earlier I mentioned that this is the motor speech area. This will be the sensory speech area. Okay, sensory speech area is responsible for comprehending all the speech. Uh, all the language that you uh, understand, that you hear, that you read, everything will be processed in the Wernicke's area. Uh, suppose you hear some speech, the sounds will be processed initially in the auditory area and the language will be processed in the Wernicke's area over here. Okay. Uh, the Wernicke's area is connected to the Broca's area through a subcortical fasciculus, through a subcortical white matter and that is called the arcuate fasciculus. So, the arcuate fasciculus connects the uh, Wernicke's area in the posterior part of superior temporal gyrus to the Broca's area. So, you imagine I am hearing a word, apple. The word runs through all auditory processing and finally it reaches the thalamus. You imagine this is the left cerebrum and this is the left thalamus. In the left thalamus, this neural signals will ascend up and finally reach the third order neuron in the medial geniculate body. From the medial geniculate body, the third order neurons will project through the auditory radiation under the lentiform nucleus through the sub lentiform part of the internal capsule into the Heschel's gyrus. So, Heschel's gyrus is the primary auditory cortex, that, that is the part which we have already considered. So, finally all auditory signals will reach the Heschel's gyrus or the primary auditory area. I am going to rotate this brain like this. So, in the primary auditory area or the Heschel's gyrus, the sounds of the word apple will be processed and that will be further processed by the area number 22 which is the auditory association cortices. From the further processing, higher order processing that occurs in the auditory association cortices, signals will reach the Wernicke's area which is the posterior part of the superior temporal gyrus. This is the temporal lobe, this is the frontal lobe. So, you have the 41 area, then 22 and most posteriorly you have the Wernicke's area which is the location where the meaning of this word will be processed. So, when the signals reach the Wernicke's area, I understand, I comprehend the meaning of the word apple. And from the Wernicke's area, imagine fibers that are running through the arcuate fasciculus to the frontal lobe, to the lower left inferior frontal gyrus. I mentioned in the left inferior frontal gyrus, it is the Broca's area or the motor speech area where you have an anterior horizontal and an anterior ascending ramus of the lateral sulcus and this is the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus in between which you have the pars triangularis and the pars opercularis. So, these two regions will be the Broca's area. So, these fibers will finally reach project into the Broca's area and in the Broca's area you will have the processing of words. All the words that needs to be produced will be processed in the Broca's area and this Broca's area will influence the lower part of the precentral gyrus. I mentioned in a previous video that the precentral gyrus is the upper motor neuron location. So, the lower part will be the head area. So, in the head you will have the neurons which is going to innervate the larynx, the pharynx, the tongue, the lips which are all needed to produce speech. Uh, if I want to repeat the word apple that I just heard, the fibers, arcuate fasciculus will carry the signals towards the Broca's area which will program all the motor programs that are needed to do a, a word output as apple will be produced by Broca's area and that will influence the primary motor area, area number 4 in the head region to produce the appropriate muscles and create the word apple. So, this is how uh, the structural substrate is aiding function. So, we, are we have just learned the, how the perisylvian cortices are playing a role in understanding, in transmitting, in conducting speech and also in producing speech. Thank you.